What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to talk about depth and creating depth with layers in your design. So what do I mean by this? Check out some of these examples. I'm gonna show you some considerations and we're going to build a landing page essentially from scratch and I'm gonna add depth continually throughout this example and I think it's really gonna help you add what I call visual interest in your UI designs. So as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so I have a new design document here in Figma and we're gonna start off with a frame and that is going to be the desktop frame preset, but we're gonna make this a little bit larger. Um, for the width, we're gonna go at around 1650. So 1650, all right. And the height, we're gonna push to like 1130. All right. So um, basically, we're, I'm not gonna be designing everything from absolute scratch. A lot of it I'll just paste in from um, the, the pre-design I already designed. I, I don't want this to be an extra long tutorial, um, but we will be focusing a lot on the topic at hand, which is layering and depth. So um, first, let's go ahead and get a background color here. It's just gonna be a dark desaturated blue, one of my favorite color schemes. Uh, we'll also take this background and just kind of make it lighter for the canvas. And I'm going to have a very, very simple navigation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in right there. Um, we're gonna have a headline. So that headline is going to go right here. So your UI learning experience just leveled up. Now, the reason UI learning wasn't there by default is because we're gonna do something interesting with that type. Um, we'll also have a simple uh, subheadline right there. And by the way, the font I'm using is called Inter. Uh, it's it's a part of, uh, it's one of the fonts that comes with Figma, I believe, um, fairly certain. But anyhow, um, we're also gonna have a couple cards. Um, and so I'm just gonna paste both of those cards. They're super, super, super simple. Um, they're gonna go right here. Yeah, I'd say somewhere right, right around here is pretty good. All right. Obviously, I didn't bother customizing the text of each one. Boy, am I lazy. All right, um, and then I, outside of that, we're gonna have, as far as other content is concerned, we're gonna have another column of content that kind of just sits, eh, probably somewhere right around here. Let me adjust that later. And right now, as you can see, there's no depth occurring, really. Nothing's kind of overlapping each other. Uh, and it looks fine as is, uh, but obviously with exception to this big empty area, but I, uh, this is where we're gonna begin um, discussing depth here. So one way that you can add depth is to overlap your content, especially like your type-based content, like these cards, for instance. And when I say overlap, I just mean kind of like lay on top of or break outside of the box, so to speak, is to have like a rectangle, let's say. Um, and well, typically I'll show you like the, a typical pattern. It would be something like this and I'm going to grab a specific color. It's just gonna be slightly lighter than the background of which it's sitting, so it's low contrast. And we're gonna put this here in the back. All right, so uh, one, one way people would typically approach this, if they wanted to kind of containerize, so to speak, uh, a new section of content, is just to give it equal white space on the top of your container and the bottom. And that's completely fine. But if you're dealing with a low contrast background element like this, um, you can break outside of the box, so to speak. And this is a way to add depth. So here's what I mean. Um, we'll simply take this, uh, let's take all this type right here and let's move it up, probably right around here, but we're also gonna take this and scale it down right there. 
So because it's low contrast, it is completely okay for this, this background element and this type to kind of just sit and overlap right on top of it. Uh, it kind of adds a little bit more visual interest and depth to the design. Now, if this background element were something like this, this would be a no-no, uh, clearly, because we now lack contrast for the type element sitting on top of it. But if it's low contrast in, in, in relation to the background in which it's sitting, you can completely get away with doing this. So let's go back. All right, as you can see, it's still a very subtle background color change, but it is there and uh, most people will notice it. So that's the one way. Now, another way, let's address this empty area here. Typically, this is like, you know, this is your hero section. Um, you'd have an illustration or a photograph of some sort. <clears throat> so a great way is to use a photograph with a transparent background, which will allow you to do this sort of layering depth effect. Um, so this is a fictional app that has something to do with UI gaming, whatever that means. <laughs> um, and we're going to take a look at Unsplash which is a plugin that you can, a free plugin you can install. And Unsplash allows you to search for 100% free to use images. And so um, we're just gonna say gamer, all right? Uh, or ra rather virtual reality. All right, so this is a great picture right here uh, that you can use. And by the way, when you select it, you can click view image on Unsplash and you can get the actual unsplash.com full image and you can completely download the original size or the large size. Large size would be fine or even possibly medium. Um, and after you do that, what you can do is you can go to remove.bg. All right, that's a website. Perhaps you've heard about it, but um, you can just upload an image like this uh, that doesn't have a transparent background, but really has a single image that could be easily cut out. Um, and it will automatically remove the background for you. Now, of course, you could use Photoshop as well. You can use the object uh, removal tool, um, but this this is uh, also 100%. You know, this isn't 100% free though. Uh, you get like one credit for free, and you can up and you can use that. So, um, for instance, if I choose, let's just choose the large one, and I'm going to go to Show in Folder. I'm going to move this off to the side, and then we're going to just drag that over. All right, so look, it, it's automatically going to remove that background for us. And if you click Download HD, I so I already have an account. Let me connect it. Yes, I know I'm, I'm revealing my email address, not a big deal. Um, <laughs> so now I can cl click uh, Download. Now I did pay for 10 credits, so that's why it has 10 there. And now what I can do is uh, we can delete that. I could just drag this on. All right. By the way, I think this is a fellow designer. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but like it's uh, Min Fam or something like that. All right. I mean, it's, that's what it says in the URL. I mean, uh, or the file name. All right, so um, let's think here. I think I wanna push this stuff down just a little bit further. Oops, I wanna select everything. Yeah, probably like right around here. I'll take these and kind of push them back up. Take this, push it up, and this, push it right around there. Okay, so we take this person right here. And again, we still don't have any type of layering occurring uh, over in this section, but we certainly can. So um, one way we can uh, do this layer effect is we can have a watermark in the background. So um, I'm just gonna say, whoa, we're gonna make this bold. Maybe we'll make it extra or black, all right? And then what we'll do is we're gonna make this thing really large, like, yeah, maybe like 350. All right, now we're going to use our bracket keys to put that in the back. And to make this really low contrast, here's a little trick that we can do. Um, well, actually, we don't even have to convert it. We could just uh, take that fill off, give it a stroke. There we go. 
That's not, that's not a trick, by the way. I was gonna convert it to outlines, but it's unnecessary to add a stroke. And then we could go ahead and take the uh, opacity way down like that. Like it's barely noticeable and that's what you want uh, for this effect. So now we've laid, we have one, like a, a one depth level of a layer uh, occurring here. We have this background, which is clearly behind the person. And we see that because it's transparent. Um, and then we have this element here. Unfortunately, the arm is cut off. I wouldn't normally, you know, uh, use that. You'd want to find a picture that's completely not like that. But either way, um, this is pretty solid here. Um, and you can get away with just this. Like this right here, this design as is, is completely fine to me. But I want to take it a step further just to show you some more ideas. So another thing we can do is, and this one I will do from scratch, uh, just to show you how to, we'll get some glass morphism in here. And so we're gonna have like little chat blips that are on top of this person. So what we'll do is uh, I'm just going to say, um, let's see, holy crap, that was really awesome. And we're dealing with really large type here, but we're gonna make this very small now at 16. And we'll also make this regular, all right. So let's just put this like right here. And then, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that. And we also wanna select this person and lock them as well. Okay, so now um, we're gonna take our rectangle tool and we'll just wrap this around and we'll give it a little bit of border radius. All right, and then what we'll do is we're gonna take, um, Gonna, I think we're gonna go mid gray for now, but then we're gonna add an effect. And this is going to be a background blur. And we'll take the uh, opacity down. Now let's get both of these elements on top. There we go. So there's still not enough contrast for my liking. Um, now we can take the settings here of this background blur, blur and make it maybe like, yeah, maybe like 10. But also, um, was experiment with basically this value um, and then also versus the opacity value. So, you know, something like probably right around here could work or we could go lighter than the background that's sitting on. Push it up something like that. Now we can also have kind of like an avatar design. So we could put um, this situation here, maybe bring this down. All right, and then also we'll use the pen tool, P. And then we can also take this. Uh, we don't want a stroke, we just want to give it the same aesthetic as this, uh, as this element right here. Oh no, did I lose it? One second, there we go. Let's take both of these actually, and we'll just uh, merge those. There we go, so now we have to add our fill back. And I can do this pretty quickly. And then add our background blur, except <laughs> we don't want it to apply to the type that's inside of it. Uh, actually, the type was outside of it. There we go. And we don't want this. Take that out, there we go. Now let's go back. Um, Yeah, something like uh, that would probably be pretty decent. All right, so now we can probably put this one like right here. And I just wanted to show you guys all how to make that, but I have um, these designed already, three of these little elements. Um, so I'll just paste in what I had before. Here's one. I think that had more of a layer blur. Um, and then we could take one, um, put it overlapping right down here. And then we'll take another one and put it behind the actual individual. So uh, this one, we'll go ahead and kind of put like right here, but behind. So there we go. Like right there, nice. And of course, you want to you know position these things in a way that makes sense. I think this this makes pretty good sense uh, for these little chat blips. And so now we've even added more depth, uh, which I think it looks really cool. 
Um, like I said, e even without adding these little th elements right here, we could completely be fine um, and, and this would work well. But um, let's take it another step further just to show you how to add even more depth, um, just to have fun with this. I think probably doing this would be a little bit too much, but let's get rid of this and we're gonna take UI learning, paste this in like right here. Notice how it's kind of like at an angle. And one of the things that really helps uh, separate a, a, a really experienced UI designer from one that perhaps is not is when they try to really make and tailor their design, um, uh, make it unique in relation to the however they're designing the layout. So I, that's probably bad verbiage on my part, but just to show you, this this one's like your UI learning experience just leveled up. Okay, so we have a headline, and what we're, what are we talking about? UI learning, right? So what is UI? User interface design, right? Like what we're doing right now. All right, so maybe we could take this piece of type called uh, right here, kind of highlighting it, UI learning. And maybe we can make it look like it's being, uh, it has like a pen tool connected to it uh, or like a wireframe. Um, that's one of the, those unique ideas that uh, is just gonna be completely relevant and unique to your design alone. Um, so what I've done is I've created kind of something like this. Kind of looks like the uh, Figma prototyping uh, wireframe, like little thing right here, but we also have a Bezier curve situation right there. Let's uh, get that over there. There we go. And then we can also, to create depth behind this element, um, we can have another one. So one that connects at the bottom. And so this is where it helps just to be you know, creative, uh, to do some things that are different. Um, let's see here. And we'll take both of these elements group them up, put them behind everything. All right, so now this is kind of at the top and this goes behind the type and behind this type. And because this is low contrast, this little line right here, it's completely not a big deal. And there we go. Uh, oh, by the way, we do want to kind of take this. Oh boy, where are we at? Okay, I'm gonna ungroup that actually because I want that ellipse to be on top. There we go. Now it makes more sense. Okay, and there we go. As you can see, we have a lot of uh, levels of layers that have been created, and it just really makes the uh, the design that much more interesting, uh, like I say, visual interest. Uh, and I think uh, it's been done quite effectively here, and so hopefully that has helped you. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that interesting. If you did, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't, check it out, designcourse.com as well, where you can learn UI, UX in an interactive setting. And I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.